Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll be discussing why government officials do not want protests. Over the past few weeks, a range of government officials and even security agency heads have spoken against the planned end bad governance protests. Several reasons have been given for their calls to dissuade Nigerians to exercise their constitutional rights of protest chief amongst which are security concerns and the possible hijacking of the protest by certain groups. Certain groups have said, despite the pressure by officials, they will still head to the streets come August 1st, 2024. With all these issues on ground, we will be taking a deep dive to understanding the reasoning behind the calls to four Nigerians to disembark from exercising their constitutional rights. Now, joining us to have a conversation on this is Shola Omolayo. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining the program. Good morning, Nigerians. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're talking about protests, right? Um, there's a protest slated for the 1st of August, 2024. That is next week um, for the hashtag end bad governance, right? A lot of people have said that there is hunger in the land. There are so many things that's happened, insecurity. Um, things are just not working well the way we expected it to be. And the current administration has been here for about a year or just over a year. And we're not really seeing so much that they're doing. They're doing little things, but most people feel like it is not enough. And so others have come out to say, no, there shouldn't be any protests. Um, they might just hijack it. There could be anarchy and all of that. And even the Obra of Benin has said, we need to exercise more patience um, with the government. But what do you think about where we currently are in Nigeria, our economic situation, and why you think people should go out into the streets to protest or why they shouldn't? Yeah, let me start with um, appreciating Nigerians for going through what they are going through and holding their peace. Again, one of the problems is what you are seeing or hearing. I know their lives. The same song, Sop Ahead, the group, Sop Ahead. It says Sop Ahead must go, Jeff Ahead must come. That was the last song. Some of the summer is that if you are hearing me, you will notice at the background is not pleasant at all. As we're trying to take up this interview, I mean this talk, you will notice that you are not even enjoying it either from the studio or from the from, the, from wherever you guys are listening from. Why? My generator will be taking. That is one of the problems. And let me tell the governments and those who cares to know that the protest has taken place already. How? If you notice, the response of government in these past days just show that their peers are on, are, are, are on ground to know what is going on. It, this might be the first time that our president is getting to hear the plight of the people for a long while. I ask the question, why now? The people are agitating that they want to come to the streets. The government or the first time again are also agitating at that level that no, this thing must not come to play. Why? Because of the fear of your own. Why? Because of the experience that came up some few days ago or a weeks ago from a country like Kenya. Nobody, the people of Kenya, the government of Kenya might not realize the magnitude of the after effect of whatever might take or uh, took place in that state. And I think that is the last thing that the government of the day is looking at. Having an experience of NSAS. And I want to believe that the NSAS was a successful one before we had some interloper. Well, we never knew where they come from. Because the victim, we are still having the pay why the government is still searching for the culprit, as we been said. Judge Bill has taken, uh, uh, was carried out based on some arrest that was made, but we can't even hear what is happening today. Remember that one of the elders from Kaduna, in person of Sonny, uh, 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 Sonny, 
who was a member of the, of the parliament, had an engagement in Abuja, where the president was seated. And he told the president that when you talk about protests, you mm -hmm. are the father of protests. You taught us how to engage government. And I, don't, I never think the, the president denied that. He even reminds the president that, please, I want you to help in releasing some of the guys that was arrested during the time of Essex. He put it to the president that these are your own grandchildren. You train their fathers, the, 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 the sons of the sons of the, the sons and daughter of those parents and now grew up to learn how protests should be made. Now, I want to say the hunger is just there. How can you wake up in the morning? A, 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 a lot of bread that is sold for 550 naira suddenly jumped to 1,400. Oh boy, let me speak like we Nigerians, the we Nigerians. Even if you buy that 1,000 boy of bread, you go chop and you don't know. You don't go to it. It has gone that far. No man is a man again in his house. In those days, men give command in their houses. No man they give command in you. Because you have to try and communicate with your wife. You need to sit down and say, the language of what did you bring to the table is an odd language of Africa. It just tells you that the manpower has been brought down. No one man who will be human being for Nigeria. That's it. But what, what would you uh, describe the response? The, way the security will be able to manage it well if it happens. Because just like the government are saying, there is, they don't have room to hold for it. And they are coming with force. You don't keep force with force. With, with, uh, what are you... What, what? Yes. Well, how would you describe the response of government to all these uh, things that are to to this uh, protest? By the way, because we still have not have not had uh, the president say a thing. We are hearing through proxies. Uh, the minister of information is saying some things. We hear the SGF has convened a meeting. We've not heard anything from the president, as far as I know. And then. We are hearing governors and ministers threatening the people, warning them that they must not go on the streets and all that. So how would you describe in your own words uh, the response of government to this protest that is looming? Because it feels like it must happen, but they are responding in a way that I don't understand. All right. Please, I'm having a problem with your, with your own body there. But it's okay. Let me just speak from what you have said. My advice, I will say again, is to our security agent. They will stress out. The level of corruption, I mean, the level of crime we are having in Nigeria is so high that our security agents are also facing the same problem. These are the same security men we are going to send out. I don't know when they say the, 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 the hotel is going to come up, how it's going to come up. But we must be able to sanitize the mind of the security agent to manage a lot of things with care while they've been stretched out. Nigeria is up within 180 million and 210 million. What is the network of our security men? By my own elementary study, the government servant is under 1.5 million, which includes the security actives. Tell me, how can 1.5 million? of the servant, assuming they are fused into the police, into our police and our soldiers, can they, can they, can they manage unwanted crisis at this time, where all the states are seemingly acting as they are involved, and the, gov the governors, the administrator of some of these states are beginning to speak fire, instead of appeasing the mind of the people. How can you tell a a a a, 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 a crying baby to stop the crying when you are not treating what is affecting the baby? If the baby is being beaten by a mosquito bite, is being beaten by a mosquito, you don't check the body and you are asking the baby to stop crying. And you adding to the problem, this is a baby that does not know what the environment looks like. It's still a baby. That is the kind of Nigeria we find ourselves. Nigeria is being battered from 
some years back. We are not saying that this government caused it, but the same government, a person of the president, told us that we should not pity him, that he understood the problem before he came up. So why are they not threatening us when they already know the problem? Because it's so wide. How do you tell the fear of the Nigerians who, is not as a, who does not sustain the kind of business that they will embark on that will not be truncated? How do you tell me that the element in which the Nigeria is using to pivot his life is going down right before his face, the cost is getting higher right before his face, the powers that be cannot put themselves together looking at the heart of Nigeria, which is the petrol power that makes Nigeria to, 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 to move an answer now is being what to be checked, is being what to be threatened in the name of one refinery and one government that has not given license. What kind of environment are we living in? What kind of environment you are living in when you are so afraid to invest in a nation where the currency is not stable? Yesterday, they will tell you it's 450, 1,530 naira. Tomorrow they will tell you it's 445, I mean 1,420 naira. By, by, by the next week, which is going to be Monday, you will not be sure that it will be 1,518 naira. Who invests in such a country where the currency is not stable? Who yes, invests sir. in such a country where it's so would you say it's not assured? So would you invest in a country where the security is not being uh, the, the, the citizen of the country would at the owner of the country are not too, uh, they are not too sure of the safety of their life in the hand of our security. Okay, sir. Do you want to blame the security? No. What is the workforce? I keep saying, what is the strength of the Nigerian police mm. that you want to ask to, to police uh, uh, the police and secure the citizen that is under threat? The threat we are talking about is a threat of hunger, which was better in this army, is the threat of hospitality. All right, so would you say that it's only oh, no. protest? Can you hear me, Benin. sir? I Hello, sir. Benin, I in, in Benin, one minute, one minute, Shola. So would you say that it's just protest that the Nigerian government understands? Like, is that the only way we can make our voices heard? Or are there other measures that we're supposed to be looking at in w when we're saying we want to be able to amplify our voices, tell the Nigerian government what we're facing, and then they listen to us? So is it that, as of this point, the Nigerian government will not listen to what we have to say except we go out to the street? Because I'm sure people have been saying it in their little corners. But here we are, August 1st, most people are going to be out on the streets having to march to end bad governance. Is that the only way that we can actually make our voices heard right now? And is that the only language the Nigerian government understands? That tells you that either the government or the people, we are confused. I ask, the incarnation of end bad government is not, is not, is not stated clearly. That shouldn't have been the language. language. Hmm. That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. Because if you say, hey, bad government, who do you have to your vanity? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hmm. I think we just um, lost Shola's audio. But anyways, um, it's it's quite unfortunate that people have to march into the streets for them to make their or express how they feel. I would expect that the government should be thinking, the government should be proactive and do what is right for the nation. We don't have to get to this point where we're carrying placards in the streets, having to demand what is rightfully ours. We hope that one day Nigeria will get to the point whereby the government is doing what is right. They're putting policies that will benefit the people. They're ensuring that we have quality education, good health care, great infrastructure, um, you know, everything, security, everything that makes up a nation to be successful enough for people to say, yes, I am proud to be a Nigerian. I hope that one day we would have that nation. But, well, one day at a time. I think, I, I think I, I've,
personally feel insulted that uh, the president has not said anything. Mm. Um, I know people would say he has he has addressed us in this way or that. But the days are getting closer. There should be a national address, mm -hmm. if you ask me. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be the the secretary to the government that is convening a meeting with ministers to talk to them. And then after that, when they decide, we'll then now go to tell the president, this is what we have decided, go mm. and announce it. Is mm. he their errand boy? Is he <laughs> their minister of information? He should be the one calling everybody together and saying, okay, this is where we are. Yeah. Because it is his legacy. Nobody will that remember uh, Wiki uh, after maybe 20 years. They will mm. remember that Tinubu was, was the president, president at this point and yeah. things were working well or they were not working well. Mm. So I think this impunity where you think that you can do anything and undo because you have boys here and there it should stop mm -hmm. the president should address nigerians and plead with nigerians apologize to nigerians even if yeah. he has done it he should do it again and again mm -hmm. time is running out today is the 25th already which mm -hmm. means we have like six days or seven days to the time that the protest is supposed to happen it is not enough paying people here and there to come and say we do not want protests and all that well, people are hungry so the president should do something. Do something I don't want it. a protest because at least one life would be lost. Mm. Whether we like it or not, one life would be lost. Anyways, um, Shola, this is where we have to wrap it up here. We couldn't hear you for a bit, but we want to say thank you for coming and sharing your valuable contributions. Thank you so much. Mm. Anyways, we're sticking with Shola Omolayo, is a public affairs analyst, and we've just been talking about the protests um, and why most people, most politicians, do not want people to go out on the streets to protest. But at the end of the day, our voices need to be heard, and so whichever way, we still need to demand what is rightfully ours. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with us. My name is Rume Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. I can only only wish our Falcons uh, success in today's encounter with Brazil because that's how they're kicking off their um, Olympic campaign. Today they are going to have that match about 6 o'clock in the evening or so. I wish them luck. And every Nigerian also, let us unite just like we unite when we are watching sports and especially football to pray for our country, to seek better conditions for our country and do whatever we can from our small uh, spaces that we find ourselves. Let's see. Let's meet again tomorrow for another edition of the program. My name is Nyamgul Agadja, I nearly forgot that.